The Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria has told the federal government that removing fuel subsidy will worsen the suffering of a majority of Nigerians who are already impoverished. The president of the PFN, Bishop Waluki, urged the government to shelve the proposed policy in order not to worsen the hardship of the people and trigger crises in the country. Well, joining us to discuss this is financial analyst um, Richard Inoyo and Chairman Christian Association of Nigeria, Kaduna State Chapter, Reverend Joseph Hayab. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you for having us. All right, I'm going to start with you, um, Richard, because you're, you know, you are into the numbers. Um, it's interesting because every single day that goes by, Nigerians are forced to tighten their belts every day. Um, and it, the case doesn't seem to be easier, you know, by the day. You hope that, you know, as the day go by, um, the days go by, the government would come up with policies uh, that would, one way or the other, um, lighten the load of the average Nigerian. But that doesn't seem to be the case. But let's, um, you know, let's zero in into this subsidy removal issue. Um, this is one of the things that the the then, when our president was then a, a candidate, a, a presidential candidate, he and many others who are now members of, his, of this APC political party um, walked through the streets of Nigeria, um, occupying Nigeria on this issue of subsidy removal. But here we are again with the same issue, but this time the government seems to be on that side. Richard, can you hear me? Well, let me start by saying uh, it's sad that we even have the president. Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Now, it's sad that we even have a president contemplating, contemplating to increase the price of oil in Nigeria. It's, it's sad, to be honest with you. It's just so sad. Why I'm saying this is because if you look at the statistics, from what poverty clock it is said that over 105 million nigerians are currently living below the poverty line they're living in extreme poverty not just poverty but they're living in extreme poverty and what that simply means in the real sense is that for every two nigerian one is technically poor okay and that is why some of us in the financial markets we're already thinking or coming to the conclusion that the president of Nigeria seems to have a national poverty expansionary plan, a national poverty expansionary plan aimed at dragging more Nigerians into the poverty nets, aimed at ensuring that every family at the end of the day produce people who can be classified as poor, people living below $1.9 a day. That why, would, why, would that, why, would that, why would that be the plan of Mr. President when he promised us to give us a better economy, to fight corruption, and to, you know, give us more employment. I'm trying to understand what, where you're coming from. No, you see, uh, a wise man once said that don't listen to what they say. Watch what they do. Focus on the action. Okay, so if you're to focus on the action of the president, not the speeches, you know, we have to focus on his action. Now, let me put it clear to you. This is a country where the cost of even doing business is already high. That's one. Two, when you take that cost of doing business, okay, into the metrics of knowing that we don't have constant energy, what we call electricity in Nigeria, that simply means by increasing the cost of assessing the PMX, what you're trying to do technically is to increase energy costs for business operation. And do you want me to explain to you what that implies in terms of running business in Please Nigeria? Do. Please do. Or what that would mean for manufacturers who have to choose between recruiting more stress, investing more money, supply they need to be able to power their plants. So literally, we are going to be faced with not only just rising costs of production, we'll also be first as in face with rising cost of moving our products from one place to the other. So on the overall, this policy is in the real sense when it comes to removal of sub subsidy, which I don't even think the issue is about subsidy here. It's about an attempt by the presidency, because we have more of the presidency than the president. This is an attempt by the presidency and NNPC alongside the international collaborators to ensure that they cripple the Nigerian economy 
okay, with this policy. So first, you're going to have increase in the cost of doing business in terms of how you get your energy and what it costs to get energy. Also, the cost of moving your products from point A in Nigeria to point B in Nigeria. If you put these two costs together, transport costs and energy costs, I'm not even talking about the cost of raw material that will be impacted with the increase in the price of, of the PMX. I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't go into that. But if you take these two costs together, what you're going to have is what I call the equivalent of what's going on in Lebanon, where people have money, but yet they cannot use their money okay, to buy tangible goods that they need. Mm. And I'm so, so afraid okay. that where we're heading to is a, is, is a place where not only that we're going to have more Nigerians dragged into the pit of poverty, we're going to have massive insecurity problem because when people can't get jobs because companies are folding up, because companies can't stand the cost of energy and mm. the cost of transportation, logistics, what that simply means is that they're going to fold up, people lose jobs, insecurity will rise, and at the end of the okay. day, we all will be sorry for it. Okay, uh, Reverend Hayab, I know that you have to stand on your pulpit every day and preach that message of hope to the people that are in your congregation, um, telling them to hold on that God is going to, I, I really don't know, I'm just trying to presume what you would be saying to people, because um, people are in church looking for some shred of hope but then, of course, um, Bishop Francis Waloke is saying that we're going to be facing some form of multidimensional suffering. And from what the financial analyst is saying, it's not, uh, it's not, a, it's not a story where we, we see a, a light at the end of the tunnel, is it? Truly speaking, uh, the situation... Uh, Reverend Hayep, are you there? I think we're having a connection issue with you. Well... It is a sad one because when you see someone or a group of people who advocated to stand for the masses, who advocated to defend the masses, who advocated to give services to the masses, turning back to begin to make things difficult for the masses, then it's unfortunate. Because all of us are aware that this current leadership came on the platform of telling the masses that the previous leadership were not doing right, they were not serving the interests of the people, they were instead exploiting the people. But sincerely speaking, the exploitation at this moment is bad. I don't want to be too technical. Thank God that our brother has actually shared his view as a financial analyst. But let me put it from the practical point of view. Even the solution government is presenting to Nigerians itself is a big problem. How can government tell us that they want to uh, remove subsidy, but they are going to pay four... Uh, again, I think we have lost um, Reverend Hayab. Uh, Reverend Hayab, can you hear me? Are you there? Uh, well, apologies. Uh, we're having that connection issue with Reverend Hayab. We'll try to bring him back. But back to you, Richard, uh, while, while you hold forth for um, Reverend Hayab. I was speaking with some people um, over the weekend who said, uh, one person said, um, I took 30,000 naira to the market and I was unable to buy anything. And another said, um, I bought gas, you know, for 8.5 the other day and now it's almost 10,000. Uh, and who knows what it's going to be in December. Let's not forget the Yuletide is just around the corner. Naturally, um, the prices of things literally hit, um, you know, the roof. What is the fate of the average Nigerian? Is the December going to be debty in any way? Well, first, you see, okay, there's a saying that how the weekend is going to be, we're going to know uh, as in by, 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 by on Friday. So the truth here is that, uh, I don't see Nigerians even celebrating. I think someone made fun, made a joke recently and said that it's as if the Christmas carol are no longer playing. It's as if the Jingle Bell songs are no longer singing. Who stole the bell? That goes to show that uh, we're getting to the point where people don't even feel like celebrating anything anymore because the money you have is competing with so many other needs such that you don't even want to celebrate where it matters. And it's sad to know that the president is already indirectly through his proxy telling Nigeria that the biggest gifts we're going to get in the new year would be something that will touch our lives. And it's worrisome. It's not as if some of us enjoy coming to talk on TV or attending to interviews on radio. But when you see the policy and the direction of the policy and what it implies in terms of poverty and insecurity 
business costs and all of those things, you come to realize that we are in a very serious problem. And the only way out is for us to reverse the policy. In fact, the idea that we have the presidency thinking in this direction makes me feel very sad. Don't forget that one of the reasons why the likes of Jonathan lost the election was because it was proposing increase in the price of the PMS. And that was what actually led to all the persons coming together to form a coalition to wrest power from him. So if that is the fundamental reason for which power left the PDP, for instance, or President Goodluck Jonathan, why does President Barry feel that Nigerians want him to do exactly what he stood against? And they also stood for him for standing against that. So it does not really make sense in the okay. real sense. I think there's a cartoonist that came up with a joke where a man was standing upside down and the wife was practically asking the man, what are you trying to do? He said, he's trying to understand the policy of this government. All I can see right now is that there's a total disconnection between the president and the Nigerian people. And maybe the president is thinking that by increasing the price of oil, Nigerians would pat him on the back. No. What is going to get at the end of the day will just be increasing agony and likely a nationwide protest because it's no longer about uh, he's from South, he's from the North, or he's a Muslim, or he's a Christian. It's about how do all of us in this country get affected by policies that okay. seems to mean something dangerous to us. Finally, so, finally, be be before I let you I, go, before I, I let you go, you. yeah, quickly, before I let you go, in, in, a, in a few words. The presidency that you have been referring to has great economists. I mean, there's, there's an economic team that is being headed by the vice president, and I know that I know one of the one of the most intelligent people uh, in terms of the economy, um, Bismarck Rwani, uh, Rwani, actually works in the presidency. Are you trying to tell me that these people have not necessarily looked at the um, the aftermath of this fuel subsidy removal? before they okayed it for the government to even bring it to the fore in closing? I, I don't even believe that they have been listened to because I have high level of respect for the likes of everyone. Okay? So I don't even believe that he's been listened to. I don't even believe that the vice president has been listened to. Maybe they are part of those who choose to actually okay this dangerous economic disaster, the core policy. But I believe they're not being listened to. But let me quickly chip this in before I leave. It's very important for us to understand the question. That is why I'm saying we have to deconstruct this policy. The question here is that why don't we have our refineries working? If we fix our refineries and we have the three refineries working, naturally the whole issue about subsidies will, as it would go away. Okay. How can us as a country with over 70 billion barrels of crude oil be beneath our soil, yet we don't have functional refinery. Yeah. So we should not make it look as if it's a debate around around subsidy removal or increase in price of oil. It's about the dysfunctionality of our refinery system. Okay. So we have to fix our refinery right. and that will help us to reduce the price of oil and all Nigerians will have cause to thank this government for doing the right thing. All right. Well, thank you very much. Um, Richard Inoyo is a financial analyst. We apologize. Uh, Reverend Hayab was disconnected um, as a result of the uh, internet connection. Thank you so much for speaking with us. Well, we'll leave you with what Nigerians have to say about the cost of living in the country because this is the order of the day. But I want to thank you for being part of the conversation. I am Mary Anakon. I'll see you tomorrow. The high cost of food in Nigeria, especially... Here in Lagos, is over alarming. The things that you can buy with more money before, but now if you don't have more than enough, you can eat, not even afford a cup of gari these days. You don't know what happened. The government is there. They are planning for, for their political whatever, and they are not doing anything about the country. And we are hoping for 2022 for another election. But they are not doing anything. The individual that can afford food, they are not many. And the one that are suffering for this food, they cannot get anything from it. Today they said onions, is, it is like this. Um, you know, Gary, everything, nothing is going well. Everyone, even the 
little ones knows that everywhere the economy is you know like I say everybody the mass are suffering due to the high cost of goods in the market so this has made some people you know if there are people that are feeding thrice in a day you see them they feed twice and some even once in order to do what in order to make sure that there are other things they can solve problem with money and secondly you see that the even in the case of the price of goods hiking the salary are not being increased both in the government sectors, in all parastatals anyway. So it has caused more of suffering to the mass. It's not easy. The truth is most of us have adopted the 101 feeding for feeding. <laughs> so you don't do the 101 or the 010 uh, feeding method because honestly eating three times a day in this Nigeria. <laughs> You are big, EFCC will have to probe you. Things are not all that easy for every Nigerian. I don't talk saying I only me. Because uh, the price of everything now is skyrocketing, as you yourself know. So everybody is just managing. All what we are buying in the market, the price has gone up, starting from the food stuff, starting from gas that we are using for domestic purposes and all sorts of things. But the question is that the, 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 the salary that the salary earners are taking uh, is nothing to write home about. And there is no increase in salary. But the price of things keep on going higher and higher. So, and there is nothing we can do. Uh, it is so pathetic that the, the food situation, the food crisis is, is pathetic. Nobody knows where to go. We are suffering. Everybody is living beyond. Everybody is living beyond uh, ten ten naira per two days. It's not good. So please, we have to improve the economy. Our leaders should know that uh, what we are going now is, is not good. For the common people like us, things are not really going smooth. We work from, well, I say hand to mouth. I know the funniest part. Buses getting the price of buses getting high, food stuff getting high. But the funniest part is our salary are not being increased. So it doesn't it's it doesn't make sense. At least even if this price goes up, at least they should try and make out and see the reasons with our salary. You can imagine someone earning like fifty thousand having a budget, a modeling budget of like eighty K. So you don't expect the person to, um, how will I even put it, to go forward, to buy a car or to get the desired kind of lifestyle that he or she wants. Everything is going expensive and salary is not increasing. People are just suffering in this country. The government will try to help us, to help people. People they vest you. People they vest you. God no go let us see what. See, people want die, yo. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. People they fight for this country, yo. Uh -huh. We just they manage you. Know, see, God don't let us see what. In Jesus' name. Uh -huh.